I may be dating myself a bit here, but do you remember those books where you could choose your own adventure? Turn to page 64 if you trust the elf and you want to go into the cave with him. Turn to page 82 if you just feel like stabbing the elf because you don't like him. This truck is kind of like that. We're not going to hurt any elves. Roll the intro. Hey everyone, it's Josh at Kenworth of Richfield. I really want to thank you for tuning in again this week. It's great to see all of you again. With this, we are going to go over this 2020 T800. This truck, well, obviously it doesn't have a body on it. And it's set up to accept pretty much whatever type of body you want to put on it. We made this a very versatile, very budget-friendly chassis. So, as normal, Let's do a little B-roll, show off some of this beauty, and get into it. So guys, when I say budget friendly, there's a big difference between budget friendly and cheap. And what I usually like to say in this is cheap ends up costing you more money. In the long run, always seems to work out that way. So with this, we made this truck very versatile, budget friendly, but very versatile in the same sense. And some of the ways that we do that is by adding in the things from the factory that aren't that expensive from the factory, but cost a lot of money on down the line to do that. For instance, the tow hook. This is one, if you want to add it in later, it's a little more difficult to do and a little more expensive to do. Another one that makes this truck budget friendly, but shows that we didn't skimp out on stuff, this one has the fog lights here in the bumper. It's just another one of those things that if you want to add it later, it's more expensive and more difficult, add it at the factory, it's just value. So when I start talking about value in this truck, there's just the Kenworth tradition of that high quality. And quality in most cases equates directly to value. We've got the added bars in here so it looks nice. Metal mesh grill with the screen in there for that added protection. Why not protect your expensive radiator and other coolers? The traditional four headlight setup for the T800 on this. Behind that, we've got the 15 inch polished air cleaner because it does look nice. It doesn't add a whole heck of a lot of money. There's no air cleaner on this side of the truck, so it stays pretty clean, but we've got our 425 wide base Goodyear tires, Alcoa Durabright wheels. Once again, value, but not cheap. Inside of that, we've got drum brakes, 20,000 pound axle, 20,000 pound suspension. When we flip the hood open, now we're once again going for good old reliability, good old simplicity, and good old budget. With this X15 Cummins under the hood, it is the efficiency series. It's a 450 horse engine. Plenty of power to get you in and out of wherever you need to. Part of that, 1,650 foot pounds of torque. Now, just like every other truck that we run through here, all your fluid checks are on this side. The same thing if you happen to kill the batteries. We've got jumper terminals right here for you. On top of that, with this having the 20,000 pound front suspension and front axle, steering gearbox here, same thing on the other side. As you can see, the truck is white because what other color can be pretty much universal? The thing that I like about this is, especially on this side, for some sort of striping or a name, it's really going to stand out. Radio antenna here. It has the CB installation kit in the truck already, so we've got the CB antennas up top. Down here, got the plug-in for our engine heater. 
Underneath the cab, we've got 100 gallons of fuel ready to go every day for you. Why not make the DEF tank shiny? It's not terribly expensive. Makes the truck look better overall, doesn't it? So the inside of this truck is the same as every other 1.9 meter cab, except there's always those few things that make every truck different, shall we say that? This one has the Splendor interior. It's Once again, it's pretty basic, but it's still really well equipped. This has the black headliner and the black dashboard, and I really like the way that looks. I, to me, it's just always been a, I'm a darker color kind of guy, I guess you could say, when it comes to the interiors. Over here, though, when we start to work our way across the truck, you'll see that we took out some content just in order to make this an affordable truck. This has the hand crank driver's window. Now, the passenger window is still a power window, but once again, save a few bucks here. It is still power locks. The mirrors are still heated, but they're manual mirrors. As we come over, we've got a nice complement of gauges on the dashboard here. Once again, though, we didn't go over the top and fill up every slot. We've got a couple of empty ones here. This does have the important ones, though. We've got your volts, your ammeter. We've also got drive axle and transmission temperatures in here. Just the keys of what you need to know. As you look at the steering wheel, it's the standard Kenworth wheel. And for me, I really like that also just because of the fact it seems to fit pretty much everyone's hand really well. On the column two, because this truck has the full truck kit, if you want to haul some sort of a trailer, we've got the lever for the trailer brakes on this. This truck does have the AM FM satellite available radio that will work with the Bluetooth. It's got your Bluetooth microphone right up top there. So if you've got it hooked into your phone, it's going to work for you. Really, it doesn't sacrifice much, but it still gives you a lot of good options here. The jakes, the cruise control, those are on switches on the dash because they're not in the wheel. On top of that, we've also got your dual lockers on separate switches for this for the rear ends. Down here below everything in the center console, we've got the shifter for the 8LL Ultra Shift transmission. There's also two cigarette lighter adapters here. That way you've got 12 volts for a couple of spots. And what truck would ever be complete without a cup holder? When I go through this truck, what I find so interesting about it is with stuff like the non-power windows and just some of the options that we put in other trucks that aren't here. All the stuff that makes it a Kenworth, that makes it the world's best... It's all here. It's quiet. It's comfortable. It's very usable. To me, that's what makes this truck just an amazing value. So when we come behind the cab here, that's where things get interesting. There's space. Single exhaust, and it is mounted to the side of the cab. If you're going to run a box, if you're going to run a gravel spreader, if you're going to run a dump, whatever you're going to run, that exhaust will work with it. The way the battery box is, it's nice and tucked in, it's down, it's against the frame, it's right up against the exhaust. Well, not right against it, but you get the idea. That is there to make sure that we've got plenty of frame space. When you look at the frame the whole way back here, we left that frame space open. Is this a six axle dump truck? Is it a box truck? Is it a gravel spreader? Is it a crane? It's whatever you want it to be. Let's go back to the turn to page 84 or 61 or whatever reference. What do we have there underneath the cab? Well, that would happen to be an 8LL Ultra Shift transmission. I believe that might be what you guys came for, no? From front to back, 280 inches. We left some frame back there for you, just in case you want to do something else with it. If you want to put a dump body on it, well, that's pretty easy to cut off. In fact, there's a cross member right in the right spot for you even. Out back, Goodyear rubber, 24 and a half inch. Inside, we've got Meritor rear axles, 391 gears inside of them, drum brakes, holding it all up, Chalmers suspension. Once again, all of this points to great value in the truck. Nothing's cheap, but it's all good, 
durable, long lasting, and comfortable. As I mentioned before, we have no idea what you're gonna do with this truck. We're okay with that. Trailer brake glad hands right here at the back, along with the electrical connector for you. Just options for whatever you want or need to use this truck for. Low speed maneuverability is one of the biggest complaints that I hear about the Ultra Shift transmission. And I'd like to bust at least part of that myth in this. I realize this is a very unloaded truck, but I also realize that it takes just as much control to get it to do what you want to. It's once again, it's that case of adapting to the truck instead of trying to make the truck adapt to you. So with this, as you can see, there's a line here. That line lines up with this tank strap. Now I picked this tank strap because as a driver, it's easy for me to look straight down and see that. Now, obviously, to get that in there, I don't have a whole heck of a lot of wiggle room. Also, you guys know I occasionally like to do some camera trickery. I promise there will be none of that. From the time that I back the truck off of the line to the time I pull onto it, I'm going to make that one shot. Just so you guys know. In this, also going to set up a couple of GoPros that we can look at some of the footage on later, just to see what happens. Let's get to this. I'm going to back up 10 feet or so, just so we've got a good run at it. That's enough 10 feet. So once again, I'm lining up that tank strap down there. How's it look? I'd say that's pretty good. Now, hopefully you can hear me over the truck. Think I can put it over the top of that one? Or maybe should I bet I'll back up to this one and then pull up forward again onto it. We're only moving that far each time. We're there. Pretty simple, right? So what happens, let's take into account that maybe if the parking lot, it might be sloped a little bit that way. What happens if I've got a back into it? Let's find out. I think we did okay. Should I up the stakes? Just figured out how. 
Hopefully this isn't the last picture this thing takes. Yeah. That's what, six inches of room? I see it out there. Let's do this. So how is it that I control that? And it may work differently for some others, but for me, it's 100% patience. It's slowly pushing the accelerator. And I would make it kind of akin to running a backhoe or a track hoe or any sort of piece of equipment like that. If you just start jamming on the sticks, well, we all know how that goes. But if you just give the throttle a little bit of touch, you can feel when it starts to engage that clutch. Whether it's loaded, whether it's on a hill, whenever, you can feel when the truck starts to move, strain, whatever, or let's just say load even. You can feel that. And instead of it being felt through your foot, you're feeling it more through the wheel, your butt, things of that nature. So it's through that that I'm able to get such precise control out of this. Now, granted, if you just sit there and needle it back and forth, yeah, the clutch is gonna get hot. But really, in a situation like this, to get where we need to go, it's just having that patience. Now, in defense of a lot of you that say it doesn't work that way, what I have found with this is we all get a little impatient. So you start to push it and nothing happens right away. So you push a little harder and still nothing's happened. And by that time, you're a little bit fed up and you push it pretty far in one shot. I did that too when I first started driving the Ultra Shift. I found it's just easing into it. There's a little bit of a delay and it's enough of a delay that your brain's like, hey, what's going on here? We just need to push it harder. Slow it way, way, way down. That's the biggest piece to all this. Slow. Slow your roll. Did I just say that? I guess I did. If you got a question about it, if you've got a thought about it, I'm sure you do. Let's hear it. So today we pretty well covered two things with this. First off, this truck, so versatile, so well set up, so ready for pretty much anyone's budget out there. You want to put a box on the back of it, you want to put a dump bed on the back of it, you want to put a crane on the back of it, flatbed. This truck's ready to go for whatever you need to do. We set it up with clear frame space so that way if you want to put drop axles on it, go right ahead. All the room, all the parts, all the things you need are right there. You even need a trailer set up for that too. So getting to the Ultra Shift, what are your guys thoughts on that? To me, does take some patience, takes some getting used to. Those low speed maneuvers, yeah, you've got to, got to think about what you're doing. In the same sense, I've heard so many people say how difficult or impossible they are. And to me, that's just not the case. Now, I realize this isn't loaded. This doesn't have a ton of stuff on it. 
but it does still offer you that control that you need. You just have to get used to it. You can't drive it the same way you would a manual. As I've always said, good drivers, they learn to adapt. So I don't even think I need to ask for a whole lot of feedback on that really because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get it anyways. But either way, put something in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys have to think about it. On top of that, a like always helps. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit that notifications bell too. That helps you find out when we're launching videos and it helps us in a big way too. As always, stay safe out there. Keep a rubber side down. I'll catch you on the flip side.